Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to segue this conversation. Gentlemen and ladies, because I want to talk about something that several people have been wondering about and have asked me to talk about, ladies and gents. So I do hope you will indulge me for just but a moment. The times in which we live, that's right, I'm going to talk about the days in which we happen to exist as a people. Everybody is trying to ignore the elephant that's in the room. Everybody. You, you hear people talking about these are the last days, and yet people want to ignore the fact that it was prophesied how the last days would be. We're not going to go to the scriptures at this time. We're just going to have a conversation, if that's okay with you. People think that in order to believe the information the Bible says, that they have to have some type of religion, or that the Bible is just some book that needs you to have faith in it. The Bible is not a book that needs your faith. The Bible doesn't exist for your faith. The Bible is not designed that way. The Bible, for the most part, is a book on the history of the creation of a people. What do I mean by creation of a people? Well, it starts off with the creation of humankind. The only book to have done so at that time. Well, other books attempted to talk about where we came from, but it was ludicrous and, uh, what do you call that, junk where people just come up with stuff out of the blue and then later they find out that that couldn't have been true. <laughs> well, that's what the other stories were. But the Bible, Adam being created from the dust, we all, the scripture says, after he sinned, from dust, you were from and to dust you will return well we have scientific proof that we return to dust we have scientific proof that every element that's in this planet is in us well look at that it looks like the bible was accurate when it talked about the origins of mankind ha huh, ain't that something well evolution does the same thing yeah but evolution is there is no proof of evolution with humans, there's proof of evolution with certain plants and certain species of animals. Yeah, we, we have that, but not with humans. That's why, you listen to what I'm about to say, the missing link. You see, they can't link it. It's missing. That little piece of their puzzle has been missing. And it wasn't just missing yesterday. It's been missing for millions of years because they found no records. Well, just because there are no records doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, just because there are no records means there's no proof. You have to look at all of this logically. Well, you can't look at the Bible logically. Of course you can. We just did. We just did. We just proved that when the Bible says from ashes you were to ashes you would return. That's exactly what happens. He said he was going to cause the ground to grow thorns and thistles. How is it in my area that that's all that grows? Wildflowers, which are weeds. How is it that in this area where I live, that's all that grows? I'm so glad I found the video on soilless farming because that's going to change everything for me. Got some information coming on about that later anyway to help you guys, others who are interested in the soilless farming. I, I just be patient with me, please. There's so much going on. Back to that book that people claim because of the fanaticism that's in our world that you have to have faith to believe in. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a guy named Abram. You may have heard of him. Abram was a Syrian, not a Syrian, but a individual of Syrian heritage. He lived in a land called Uz. Not Oz, Uz. And Abram was just chosen. Hey, I need you to do this. And he did it. The first thing he was chosen to do was just to move. Now, do we have any proof that he was chosen to do that? No, absolutely none. But we do have proof that he moved. 
from the territory where he lived because it's documented in history. Hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure you understand. The Bible is a history book. The same as the history books you read in school. Doesn't matter if your history book was inaccurate. The Bible is a history book. Okay? Nobody at the time rebutted the information in that book. See, previously in the past, especially among the nomadic individuals of that time, stories were handed down from generation to generation to generation to the generation. People lived longer, so those stories stayed longer. That's how it was. Everything wasn't written down at the time. The stories were carried from generation to generation to generation to generation. That wasn't a viable means of telling a story because sometimes people embellish. They add it. They input certain other contexts, which was unnecessary. So it became necessary to put things in writing. So the story about Abraham, he was called Abram at first. He only became Abraham when it was time for him to complete the second task. Prior to that, he was just Abram, just some man in some city. But it's a history book, people. You don't have to have faith in that. You just have to understand that it is history. It is what was reported at the time. The same as you, you, and you believed that Columbus discovered America. Yes, you did. Don't you dare say you did not believe that Columbus discovered America because that was the thing they drilled into every single person in America and throughout the world. Head. They drilled it into our head so much to where we could sit up there and feel the wind blowing. Okay? It only was after time that we learned that that was incorrect. So let's do the same test with the Bible. Let's say that they've drilled in our head so many things. Let's see what we can learn. Well, the first thing they said that there is this thing called heaven and hell. And that heaven, that's where God lived. And hell, that's where Satan lived. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> When we go and we read the book of Job, Hob, if you're Hispaniol and Latin speaking, we read the book of Job. We just need to read the first chapter and the second chapter, just the first couple of verses. We find out where Satan lives, where he exists. He doesn't exist in no hell, as people say. He says from walking about and roving about upon the surface of the earth. Why would he need to be in the belly of the earth? He's a spirit creature. Why would he need to be in the earth? That doesn't make no sense. Like in the center of the... Well, that because it's hot there. Oh, that's the other one. <laughs> that hell is a place of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, there were some people who had paganistic beliefs. And so they believed in people when they died, they needed to be punished. And so they came up with the idea... Uh, we could, hey, when you see someone on fire, are they not in torment? Are they not in pain? Ha, that's a good idea. Let's now say that that's the penalty for everybody who sins. They go to this place where they are in torment and pain forever and ever. Okay, let's take that. Let's say that that actually happens. Okay, who created it? You can't say God created hell. Nope, can't do that. If it's a place where people are being tormented, you can't claim that on him because then that would make the whole notion of him a lie. And you don't get to do that. You don't get to change history. See, history says that he's a God of love. Well, a God of love has already written several times. Has he written? He's caused man to write his words. See, if he had written it, because of the quality of what is known as holiness, we would never be able to read it. Sorry, something clean cannot touch something unclean or it becomes unclean. Some of you don't get that. Do you not know that if he was to literally write something for us and we are imperfect and he handed it to us, then his word would become unclean. That's why the scriptures make it clear no man has seen God at any time. The reason why they can say that is because his presence and us at the same, it's an impossibility right now. 
Go back. Look at Moses. He only saw what's known as the back of him, not the front. Why? Because the scriptures refer to him as clean. You cannot take that kid who's been playing in the mud and bring him into the wedding where everybody's dressed in white and think that nobody's going to get no mud on them. The same thing with God. You cannot take unclean and mix it with him and suppose, well, he's God. He can. Re no, sorry. It's a principle. God. And most people don't realize that he's a God of principle. But let's get back to that book. So, no Dante's Inferno, no hell. That that was pagan stuff that they threw in there. Satan doesn't exist in hell. Pagan stuff they threw in again. People don't go to hell and torment forever and ever. Again, pagan beliefs that they threw in and mixed in. It doesn't say it nowhere in the Bible. Yes, it talks about a lake of fire, but if you go to Revelation, the 20th chapter, Verse 13 to 15, it says the lake of fire, hell was thrown into the lake of fire. So hell can't be the lake of fire because you can't throw hell into itself. That's like you throwing yourself into yourself. That don't make no sense. Lord have mercy. I just, if people only took the time to read. Ladies and gentlemen, in a simple nutshell, you go to school and everybody's talking about all these books they done read. But you'll read those books and you'll take them at their word. But in the Bible, you claim you have to have faith. You don't need to have faith in the Bible. You just need to understand that it is history. And it's also prophecy. But it is history. It tells us the history. And nobody can refute that history because they weren't there. Ain't that something? Sorry. They weren't there. But we do know that the Israelites were held captive by the Egyptians. We do know that the Assyrians held Egypt captive, that there were many wars between Assyria and Israel, the nation of Israel, not Israelis. There's no such thing as an Israeli in the Bible. Go ahead. Go ahead. I dare you to find that Israelis existed in the Bible. They never called themselves Israelis. Okay, pay attention. But let's get back to the facts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have proof that the nation of Jerusalem was occupied by the Roman army. We have proof that the Roman army destroyed all of their historical records because that's what conquering nations do. The first thing a conquering nation does when they take over another nation is destroy their history. You destroy the history, you destroy the people. That's the concept. That's the idea. Why do you think the first thing the United States did in Iraq, that's right, destroyed those libraries and buildings? Why do you think Israel is destroying the universities? Uh, Democracy Now! two days ago, today is Thursday, two days ago, the 30th of January, reported that Israel had destroyed 144,000 buildings in Palestine, 144,000. That number, said by Democracy Now!, was said on purpose, intentional. Is it legitimate? I don't know, because 144,000 is a number in Scripture. So are they saying that, or did they know? I don't know. I just know that that was the report that I clicked on. You can find the video on YouTube for Democracy Now! with uh, Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez. Sorry, I've been listening to Amy, well, probably since 1980, early 90s. I mean, real early 90s. Like I told you, I used to drive, and that was the first thing I'd turn on going to work is NPR, National Public Radio. And the War and Peace Report. <laughs> she started just started doing the War and Peace Report, I think, in the late, late 90s. It wasn't called the War and Peace Report. Uh, prior, but it started to be Democracy Now! and the War and Peace Report. And that's what they started labeling it. So I've been there with Amy. But she said 144,000 buildings had been destroyed by the Israelis, the Israeli government. Pay attention, the Israeli government. There's no such thing in scripture as an Israeli. 
go ahead, I dare you to look it up and find it. You won't find that. But be that as it may, I, 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 I'm not saying anything against the people of Israel. I'm not saying anything against the Israelites. I'm not saying anything against the person who is of the Jewish nation. Here's the problem, everybody. In 70 CE, I talked about it a moment ago. All of the historical records for Jerusalem were destroyed. The Roman armies came in and destroyed all of their records. It destroyed the library, the main library, which was the temple for the people. That's why you keep hearing about the Temple Mount. That's where the temple used to be. Okay, all of the records are gone. That's where they kept their historical records for the lineages of the family lines. Those records are gone. So as of this day, nobody can prove that they are from the nation of Israel. No one, not a single person can prove that they're an Israelite, that they are a natural Jew. Pay attention to the word natural. From the heritage of not Abraham, pay attention, Jews don't come from Abraham. But y'all don't get it. Yes, they're, they're his seed, but so does the nation of Islam. Now, I don't mean the nation of Islam as in the nation of Islam in America. I mean the national groups with an S called Islam. They come from Abraham as well. Okay, Jews come from Jacob. He was called Israel. Jews come from Jacob. The nation of Israel comes from Jacob. Hebrews come from Abraham in the land of Uz. Luz, I'm sorry, Uz, U-Z. Ladies and gentlemen, what you didn't know? Jacob was called a Hebrew. Abraham was called a Hebrew. It was not only the language they spoke, but Abraham was from Syria. Jacob was called the Syrian. Once you start understanding this, you'll see that the Bible is just a history book. Now, when I say just a history book, there's more to it than that. But a lot of people don't want to know about history. They want to make you think that to learn about that history is to get wrapped up in somebody's religion, that it's a belief thing. Really? Wait, are you telling me that when the United States got into War World, World War I, that the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand is what started World War I? That that assassination wasn't planned? That the banks did not orchestrate that whole thing? Wait a minute. But we have that in history, ladies and gentlemen. World War II. The Great Depression. There are so many things that the banks have orchestrated. 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a financial crisis in 1929. Well, at least the money was backed by gold at the time, which was unsustainable because it was too many people. And even now, gold would not be viable for backing anything because there's too many people on the planet. <clears throat> oh, but now we have this paper that we call money. And guess what? The banks control it. Well, who gave the banks the right to control money? The people did. In every country, the people did. So, we believe history. We'll read books to understand about the so-called people at Jekyll's Island. But then, when the Bible explains how this came about and how that came about, we don't want to read that. We want to say, oh no, that you believe in that, and that means you believe in anything. Ladies and gentlemen, again, the Bible is a history book. It talks about history. You know, I don't know much about everything, but I do know that I was taught history. I do know that I went and did my own research on history 
when I was 15 years old. I had already been doing research prior to that because my father took the time to teach me and my family members about history. How many people's parents take the time to teach them about history? Go and listen to Rich Man, Poor Man. Listen to the audiobook on YouTube. The rich father was teaching them about the history of money because that was the focus. That's what he was focused on. He was only focused on money, and so that's what he taught. The poor dad taught them the history of life and the struggles of life. So he wasn't poor. He was rich in that information. He was rich in his, what what is the word for it? His, it's not morality, but he was rich in his person, in his genuineness, in his honesty, and I guess in his moral fiber. Because you notice the guy telling the book about the rich dad, poor dad from Hawaii does not in any light speak negatively about his fathers, the rich dad or the poor dad. Why? The reason why he doesn't speak negatively about his surrogate father, his best friend's father, and his natural father, the poor dad, is because there was nothing negative to say. He appreciated both of them for their being who they were. Go take a listen. That's a history book, ladies and gentlemen, because it's talking about life. That's a history book, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want to say for those of you who think the Bible is just some religious relic, just some book the uh, people talk about and they go to these churches and they profess belief in it, that's not what the Bible is. That's what people in certain aspects of society have made it. But that's not why it was designed. Find out for yourself why it was designed. Don't go and read what somebody else says it was designed for. See, that's why I haven't pulled it out. Go read it for yourself. Go find out for yourself. Go see the history for yourself. Look, who else could have said, from dust you were until dust you return? How did they know we came from dust? Pay attention. Yes, yes, they knew we returned to dust because they could see the remains of bodies and everything. But how did they know we came from dust? says that he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. Genesis, the second chapter, verse 7. How in the world could they have known that man came from, as Genesis, the second chapter says, from the dust of the ground? Scientists hadn't proven that at that time. We didn't even find that out until the 18th, 19th centuries. So how is it possible that they could have known that scientific fact? Not possible, ladies and gentlemen, because there was no way to prove it prior to that. There was no way to prove we came from dust. Pay attention, that we came from the dust. Yes, that we have all of the minerals that the earth has, fine. But that we literally came from dust? And from dust you are until dust you will return? Says that in the third chapter, roughly about verse 19. How is it that it could have been that accurate? Ladies and gentlemen, I wonder. So maybe it's not just a book. Maybe it doesn't need to be read as if it's some religious artifact or relic. Maybe there is some truth to it. I don't know. I found it to be. Did my own research. Why don't you do yours? And I didn't take nobody else's word for what it says. That's why I didn't open it up right now. I'm not going to tell you what it says. You're going to go read it for yourself to make sure of what it says. Now look, if it's true, if what it says is true, we're running out of time. I, don't ask me, what do I mean by that? Go ahead and read and find out. Lord have mercy. All right, look, got to go. Just wanted to take the time to say, why not go and read the book for yourself? Why not take it for what it says and not for what someone else says? Take care. 25 minutes.